stand on a road. Normally there will be a single person. And average will be no more than two. Capacity of car is five percent. Average will be two. It means forty percent capacity is being used and sixty percent is empty. If fifty percent cars are off the road, still we have the capacity. All the car owners can go to other cars. They don't need any metro. They don't need any bus. Only thing is we make some adjustments and technology can play a role. We are looking for the solutions. If people come, we will do that. Thank you, sir. We have only a few minutes left. So, if there is any comment regarding safety, this, I think uh, we will leave the pollution out, outside this room just now. And so, if you have any other issues regarding safety, which Dr. Uh, Minister can address, so I have a question. Yes. I'm a little bit more this looking at the crisis. I have a question. You took a bold decision of implementing this policy. I mean, even what from the um, safety. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about safety only. I mean, suppose I mean uh, I don't find any way. I mean, to come to the office, and I find like in Japan and other countries, I find the bicycle is the best way to come into the office, and it's very near or three or four kilometers from my, my home. So, what is the government? I mean, the government short time plan for persons like me. I mean, considering the pedestrian safety or the walk. Right now, let me accept. This is not safe in Delhi. But if you have some idea, you can give. Yes, sir. Professor Zahal is from Canada, and he is one of our most senior, most safety experts in the world. Uh, <clears throat> we experts would be the first to acknowledge that our knowledge is limited. We do not know everything about safety. But I think we certainly have more knowledge than the lay public about safety, and more knowledge about safety than the average politician has. Therefore, we have to find a way in which we can bring this knowledge that we have to the politician, so that policies are not formed on opinion or on public popularity, but is also influenced by what we know at present. And I'm saying this because the previous politician that appeared on the same panel labored in the belief that by improved driver licensing and testing, safety will substantially be improved. I think he is wrong. I think the evidence suggests that he is wrong. I think it's a waste of public trust and money to implement policies which are not informed by presently available facts. For, for politicians, there is a good thing. For experts, they have to be expert in things. Politicians need not have to be. They have to work with expert, uh, experts only. If politicians are willing to work with ex experts, they have more knowledge. They have 10 experts. Why do I have, uh, require knowledge? I have need only intentions. If my intentions are good, knowledge is required by the experts. I don't need any expert knowledge. That's what that, that's what Kavi suggested. To provide formal means to bring knowledge to the politician. The politician doesn't have to have the knowledge, but the knowledge is available, it ought to be used. I think, sir, more than what you personally is suggesting is, uh, I, I, I think we are just trying to make ourselves more important with you. That is, if you make, if you make a group in Delhi, which in, includes many of us who we think we know something, and we talk I for two or three months. I think there is not two or three months. You can make a group right now here. I can share my email ID. Sandeep is there. Sandeep, you know someone here? Sandeep can uh, represent me and you connect everybody. And most of the transport related and safety related things I have to implement. And uh, the pollution by pollution is coming in. That is, I am steering this pollution drive. So any idea on traffic safety, I say human safety, or pollution. <coughs> Sandeep.
you will bottle it and you make a group. You give my mail ID to everyone and arrange a meeting in my office and give suggestions. And can be very, very mild ideas also. You need not have to be right every time. Maybe wrong. To be right, that's not it. For the experts, there is a problem. If they give any suggestion, they should be well thought of. Otherwise, they, if they have a new idea, they will not give because this is not mature enough. Give me premature ideas also. Mature people will mature it. Yes, we have another. Hello, sir. So I am also a PhD student, and uh, regarding the whole discussion that we had, so I have one comment and one question. So the first comment is that you know you said that. Uh, we need to do some good things, uh, like we have to have this idea that we need to do good, and then accordingly we go about involving professionals. So in a way, it's like saying that you know, uh, it's like I'm the benevolent prince, and I have this uh, uh, this uh, attitude or this approach to doing good. Instead of so, we should first look at the data and the information, and then take a decision instead of first thinking about a decision and then going about finding the data. That is the first thing as a comment. And the second thing is that what is your um, thoughts on women's safety in uh, our city? Thank you. First of all, what I told is not that we need not have to look at the data. The data is there. If I learn every intricacy of a surgery, I think that is not my domain. My domain is to select a good surgeon and the basics of the principle, basic principles, do we need, really need a surgery or not? And that basic principle I need, need to know, whether we need to rearrange the things, what need to be done and leave the things in detail to the experts. If I am going to be expert, it will take years, maybe I am an expert of 10 years. But we don't have 10 years to start with and we have to start right now. Suppose we are doing so many, we are taking so many measures uh, as pollution. One way is we take one year for brainstorming to freeze out each and every detail, then we will start. Second is we will do and we will learn. And some experts, or we have decided we will do this. Now we are asking experts how can we do this. That is also a I think we'll have one more intervention. Yes, please. Uh, women's safety. Women's safety is very important, but in Delhi, I think we have to start with the mind of the people. Safety on the roads, government can ensure maybe it's up to some extent on the roads, but there is no impact only on the roads. Safety is required in the inside the walls also. We have to aware people that we have to respect women. The only problem in our society is we are hypocritic society. But we say we say best of the best things in the world, but we don't follow that. We have to ensure these things. We have to save our children. So respect the women. And if anyone misbehaves with a woman, we are making rules, we are changing the laws, they will be given exemplary punishment. And not only exemplary punishment, we are changing the rule that everyone who misbehaves or does something wrong with a woman will be punished. Thus the certainty of punishment is a more deterrent than the point of, of uh, what is the sentence. If we give every uh, sentence within three months or four months that will be a deterrent and we are making new courts uh, we are opening 26 or 28 new courts exclusively for women related cases and uh, whole of Delhi there are we are, uh, there is a survey going on all the dark spots Delhi government is going to lead them all of Delhi we are making CCT camera we are installing CCT cameras and any ideas if anyone gives, we are ready to implement that. The last intervention from Nepal. Okay. So 
oh, sorry, I hope it's, it's okay for the last one. Yeah, one of my points is one of the, of the big sources of possible progress ahead is to establish a trust between the experts and the politicians. What I mean by that is, first of all, the experts must be real experts, meaning people who have been doing the science or have been collecting the science rather than people who have been doing things and are happy with what they've been doing. So it's actually scientists or people who are science who have, who have the evidence, who can gather the evidence. Those are, those are the experts. Now, I think the politicians are quite entitled to have their ideas or even preconceived ideas on what they want to do. But then, if there is a trust between the experts and the politicians, there is a discussion which is possible. Uh, sorry, I come from France. I'm a research, uh, emeritus research professor in France, and I've had some experience of that also. When politicians ask us, we want to do this, now you have one year to do the research and give us the result. First of all, we say, a research in one year, that means we learn, we, we know a lot about this before we even start trying to give you an answer. So research must be planned ahead of it, if it's a new subject. The second thing is, let me rephrase your demand. What is your problem? Now, you, have, you, you, you want to research into that solution? Are you sure it's the only solution? Can we propose an alternative? And this is how we work on the trust. If the politicians don't trust the experts, it won't work. If the experts don't respect the politicians, it won't work either. And that means also trying to find a communication means. That means a common language. Politicians often tell us, you, you researchers are doing science, but it's nothing practical to us. You want to translate what you learn into something which is feasible. And we can do that effort. But on the other hand, the politicians have to respect that to produce knowledge. You need the time and the means. Thank you. I think that will be the last question. This is a question, not a question of only trust. This is a question of respect. We should respect experts in each and every field. And luckily, I am also an expert before being a nurse politician. So I know what is the uh, things going in the mind of experts when dealing with the other side of the table. I'm, you think that I am a politician, I am still an activist or an expert. I am not a politician. Yes. <laughs> so I, I guess before, to close, I think, uh, Marie, do you want to say the last two sentences? First of all, coming here, so often I think in other countries, the minister is so remote and you have to work through so many layers of bureaucrats to actually get your word in. And it's, it's really admirable to come here and listen to people who have access to crime perhaps and don't really know how things work in the country. Yeah, as it was. <laughs> So yes, it, it's very pleasant to see this happening. I think that's proper democracy. I'd like to congratulate you. Well, I'm just very hopeful that I can go home and tell my politicians, my chairman, Barry Sherman, that this has contributed towards the formation of a, an Indian equivalent of Pact or a Delhi equivalent of Pact. Thank you, David. Uh, before we uh, close this session, I would also really like to thank you for coming. We were very scared this morning uh, because two other members of parliament, once because we invited the people of fever, and, and uh, another member of parliament informed us at breakfast time that he cannot come in. But we have made up for all of them. Uh, because of this interaction, I think if that we could not have had so much interaction. Thank you very much.